What is up? I'm Mike Quist. If you want to learn how to build shower walls on a budget from epoxy that look like stone, this is it. This is a master class. If you want training on epoxy, you're in the right place. Okay, we've been doing this our, our entire adult career and we're sharing the tips, tools, and techniques to take your epoxy game to the next level, to make it uh, take the guesswork out of the curve. What I love about this is we're talking a bag of concrete is gonna look better than a thousand dollars worth of tile. If you're like me on your honeydew list, there's a big, giant, huge box that says redo the showers, honey. And those showers can be daunting, but what we're trying to do is teach you that those steps are actually a lot simpler than you would think. This is designed for a do-it-yourselfer. That's exactly what my brother and I are. That's what I grew up doing. My dad never, ever said no to a project. In fact, we couldn't afford to hire somebody to do it, so we did it ourselves. So the reason you're watching this video is because you looked up something to do with showers. Maybe you're into epoxy, maybe it's woodworking art, maybe uh, you just happen to stumble upon this because we did an ad. And if so, welcome to Stone Coat Countertops because in this video we're going to show you how to go from honeydew to honey done. Check it off. So I mean really, we're going we're gonna to use about 600 bucks worth of epoxy in this shower to save six grand. I'll take that return on investment. Shower pan workout, right here. DIY reality right there. You gotta do all things remodeling, and this is how you do it. Yes, you get boo-boos, and there's a little blood. This could be an epic fail right about now, dude. I could blow this, I could destroy the whole piece right now. So I'll show you the rock I was thinking about. You guys tell me what you think. I was thinking like, see this section here? Yeah. Like catching this crack here and just paint, making this a big old stamp. What's it for? If it's not flat, can you still get it? We're, we're making a stamp for, the, for the, our first shower pan. Oh, wow. That might be too thick though. You don't want it too That's high too or the thick. stamp will hit the concrete, right? Right. It's like this. Right. Got a dome. Let's go look over there. Yeah. Kind of like that whole section. Yeah. I think that's the winner right there. Let's uh a lot of good detail. let's clean it up and we'll uh this is the section. Eureka. Good good find, Matt. All right, the steps are simple. We found our rock, that was the hardest part. We're gonna mix a one-to-one -one ratio by weight or volume. This is extremely forgiving material. We're gonna add our thickener. We're gonna brush this on. We're gonna make a stamp. It doesn't need to be perfectly square. We actually want it or organic. We want tails and nibs and nubs sticking out of the edges of it. That way when we stamp our pan, it'll actually overlap and look natural. We don't want hard, sharp edges. I love the detail of this rock. I love it out here right near the river. What a story we're gonna have of creating a shower pan that mimicked our weathered rock that happened naturally with the river. What I love about this is we're talking a bag of concrete is gonna look better than $1,000 worth of tile. And it's gonna be one piece, no seams. Less opportunity for leakage. We're gonna color it, we're gonna make it look like this rock. I think it's gonna be pretty fun. I think I'm gonna do a stamp like this. About, about like this, that follows that right there. So I don't wanna get into this because it'd be a high nub and then you have a high spot that, that you're stamping. But right here, I like this right here. That's Not sweet. too deep over there, but boy, that's a lot of, lot of texture. I think that'll be cool. So I'm gonna do all my part Bs first. Give me a, another part B, and this is our plat 40. Okay. It, it almost feels sacrilegious, you know, coming out here and pouring goo on this rock. However, silicone doesn't stick to anything but other silicone in this, in this regard, so. Okay. 
I need the thickener pretty quick here. That's the shake well? Yep. What's cool about this stamp is if I like it, I can make e so many shower pans out of one stamp. You can make backsplash, you can make walkways. You make so much with the decorative stamp. And I love that no one else in the world will have this stamp. So I'm gonna pre-mix the part A and B before I thicken it. You don't wanna thicken it first. All right, let me see that thickener. This is highly concentrated. Five to say that five percent. Okay, I added like a capful. Right. Yeah, it is thickening it, but I'm gonna add some more. Wow. I mean, that looks almost like you can go vertical. Yeah. See that? Yeah, I think you're good. So I'm using my bucket here as my test and painting it on with the stick and it's staying. So I say we're thick enough, especially because we're not going vertical. Right. All right. Brush. Where's our section? Right there? Yep. Here we go. Let's make a stamp. You know, I'm thinking Hawaii on the lava rock. You can make a lava stamp. You can make a mold of like a, a figurine's face or something. Man, you could, by thickening this, it really changes the properties where it allows you to do a lot more. Okay, here we go. You don't want to make it too thin where it tears apart. Let me see that brush. Yeah, I don't think it'll run. You did good on the thickening. Yeah, I agree. I'm just trying to spread it out now to get as big of a stamp as we can. And I think I'm going to make it kind of square just so it'll fit in most spaces. Yeah. But see, like these feathered edges is exactly what I want. It's definitely what I was envisioning, it's man. Right. Like, it's perfect. You just don't want to make it too thin so that it doesn't tear on me. Yeah. I'm going to leave that be. We'll come back in 16 to 24 hours in this heat, maybe less. DIY reality right there. This isn't, this isn't the fake bathroom remodel. We're not just doing the same kitchen over and over again with uh, you know the easiest prep of all time. We're doing a shower pan. You gotta do all things remodeling and this is how you do it. Yes, you get boo-boos and there's a little blood. I, I, saw, I saw some stars, I mean, boom. I heard it. How does it look? Oh, let me see. That's a good couple layers of skin. Let's see if we can't make a concrete pan. Tools of choice, mag float, sponge float. Also what's cool about stamping concrete is uh, imperfect is perfect. Kind of like a rock face edge. What's the ratio on polymer to water? Uh, I have no idea, actually. But I bought three of these. Want me to go get more? No, uh-uh. Like, I don't think this pan's gonna need more than one bag of concrete. Right. What, a five, a five dollar bag of concrete, half a, half a thing of polymer, and some ingenuity, and you got a custom floor pan, are you kidding me? Right, and I better... <laughs> And just looking at this, the time saved versus doing tile. Oh, geez, yeah. Oh, that's... Good. It's so easy to over mix concrete. Especially the non-aggregate. 
in this, right? Yeah, this is, the aggregate in this is sand. You don't want aggregate in a mix you're gonna stamp because your high points are gonna be rocks. And so the sand in this is actually what, what holds it all together like microscopic rebar. So what I'm doing is I'm adding a little bit of polymer in my water here and then I'm going to pre-wet pre my pan so that the pan doesn't um, also create its own bond, I mean bond breaker. Uh, exactly, it'll, it'll dry kind of consistently. So you wet that pan a little bit and a little polymer in there doesn't hurt you, that's for sure. How long ago was this poured? You know, I actually hired, this is a pro tip guys. You know, I've done a lot of shower pans and they're kind of a pain and I'm good at them, but I hate doing them. And so I hired a tile guy to do it. Um, and it wasn't bad to get this thing, um, the shower pan prepped. However, if it's something you want to do, it's definitely a DIY uh, ability. You can do it. it, it's a lot of work, but uh, go check out some videos, we'll link on how to properly prep a shower pan for construction. And we didn't get fast setting because we don't want to be in a hurry. We just got um, regular set and we'll see how it works out. You think it's going to work out guys? I do. This is the right way to do it is do your pan first and then template to the slope of your pan and you're gonna get a better a better outcome. I swear, half the battle of being a do-it-yourselfer is getting the courage just to try something that you haven't done before. You know, have I ever stamped a shower pan before? Mm, I can't say that I've done it like this. And so, Am I a great concrete guy? No, but I know that I can make things look like rock. So that's what I'm doing, man. Is I know that water needs to slope down, so I'm getting it to slope down. I know that I've watched plenty of videos on, on how to do this. So here I am, giving it my best go. Wow. How do you know how thick to go? Um, well, see this little, see this little uh, Lift, tray? Yep. I gotta go flush with that. And the slopes are determined. Yep. Uh-huh. We so just kind of follow in that. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. So what I'm doing is just going around this pan right now. Getting the hard part while he mixes up that. Nice. See that you you go you go horizontal with the float to kind of establish a level line back there. And then you work off of that coming down. You know, I'll get it as flat as I need, but remember, we're gonna be putting in purposeful high and low points, so I don't gotta be perfect. Okay, let me see that sponge float. And this just gives you a uniform texture. Yeah, it just kind of erases your lines from the trowel. I'm just going through some of these parts were kind of hard to get with that metal trowel and I'm just giving it this natural slope, you know, real abrupt. All right, let's go get the Stamp. Looks good. Let's try it, man. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty dang, pretty flat already. Yeah. Got a workout on. We're gonna go down and peel that stamp, Matt. I got that, I got that floated. We're gonna go see if the stamp comes up and go stamp it. It's our stamps down there. You see the chairs? This is the view, that's where we're going to get the stamp. There's the river. Look at these guys. They're fighting over there, chipping, chipping. <laughs> yeah, very, as you see, my kids are safety conscious. 
Let's keep going. All right. Let's see if it's dry. It's dry. Here's a little sample. Look how easy that comes off, man. Oh, I think this is gonna come off like beautiful. Do you guys think it'll peel off? We barely cleaned the rock. We did it in 105 degrees. <laughs> we pushed it to the limit. It looks just like I left it, right? Right. Here we go. First concrete stamp. Oh yeah. Oh yes. That is sick. Oh, yes. That's perfect. It's perfect. We made our own concrete stamp. And it's got tappy blobby side and weathered, what would we call this? Eroded granite. Weathered granite. Weathered granite. River granite. River granite. Oh, this is a custom, custom piece, man. And all that silicone comes right off. This is Mother Nature Fractures right here. Yeah, it is. That's sick. I mean, you can feel those lines in it. Look at that, man. Look at that, Luke. All right, let's go stamp that stuff. I I, I couldn't be happier with this, man. Yeah, this is neat. Let's go really? stamp it. <laughs> That's sick. And if you want to protect yourself in the rain, it can be a hat. You could use it as a megaphone too. We got a frisbee. Hello. Help. Hello. Hello. You could use it as a frisbee. Ready? What else? Pizza carrier. Absolutely. Pour it on us. Yeah, I'll break Use it before. Yes. Yeah. Our concrete's drying as we screw around. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah. That's gonna be sick. That was the easiest removal ever. It was perfect. All right, I'm just gonna try a little water on it as lubricant. All right, here we go. Trial number one. Mm. Yeah, it's doing it, dude. That's sick, dude. Yeah, you can see it. I mean, we literally just poured this, dude. Wow. Go ahead, Mitch. Hop it. Step on it? Yeah. Feels solid, huh? Oh, yeah. Okay, ready? Shower pan workout right here. Burpees. <laughs> you got burpees in there. Yeah, man. I'm gonna leave that be. We'll sand it out tomorrow. Wow, that's cool, man. All right, we'll wait till tomorrow. We're gonna sand this up. We'll add some colorants, ultimate top coat. We'll have a finished shower pan. Table on demand. Swing. Uh. All right, guys, it's the next day and I'm just sanding out this shower pan. I'm going up to 220 grit for the next step. do the 
this a little different. I'm gonna first mock up the pink shower foam panels. I'm gonna glue everything up, cut it to size, so I don't risk pouring these and then miscutting them. That's how you can guarantee they fit really, really well. We're gonna add a little bit of thickness, but not enough to really change our, our allowance for cuts. So let's go ahead and mock this up. We'll quick coat, glue it all together. We'll add our fiberglass for reinforcement and we'll make some shower wall panels that we could take back to the shop and pour our magic and make them look like stone. Here we go. Okay, so that's wider than 48. So we'll cut these down first width. So I'm gonna go 57, we'll go 57 and a half. That gives me about an eighth on each side. And then um, I'm gonna jam it tight to the floor. That'll show us our gap. And then we'll just make that follow the floor. We'll, we'll actually scribe that, okay? And then once, once we get that in level, we can then mock our next panel on top of it. So 57 and a half is our first step. All right, 57 and a half. When I mark, I mark three places. That way, if I accidentally mismeasured, one of the marks will inevitably be off. So three marks for a perfect cut. All right, that cut pretty good. Let's go scribe the bottom of this thing. All right, all right, so see how it wants to fall from the end here? We're gonna get that tilted up, okay? We'll shim that up so that we stay level. I'll get my four foot level on that, and you can see our slope. Our slope is going down to the drain, so we need to make sure and make up for that. Boy, that pan feels solid, man. I feel like I'm standing on a rock. It's kind of cool. Right there is pretty good. So now that'll hold my foam level. And then I'm just gonna use this as my, uh, as my guide. I really need some wood that flexes though. I think that would work better. Yeah, yeah, we'll be able to push these right tight. So I'll go one, and then I'll go two right here. And then I'll push that tight push it down. right there. And then I'm just gonna trace that. And this will follow my pan perfectly. Yeah. All right. All right, where's that jigsaw at? Yeah, that cuts pretty easy. Wow. This will go in this way first. Nice. Look at it follow the ground now. That looks good. <laughs> that's uh, perfect. That's nice and level. Let's make it. Let's make the next piece. So I could go four inches. That's enough to, to, to show we're trying to stay away from the top. Yeah, that's what we'll do. That's how high we'll go. All right, let's do the next one. I like mocking this up before we coat it, dude. I wanna, uh, I wanna keep the top I won't be able to, it'd be a lot easier to give me a straight line, but, or maybe I make the top irregular on purpose. 
Like a, like a rock face? Yeah, dude, that might actually be really cool because we could join them right now at the perfect height. And, and honestly, if you wanted to, you could mock all this up and then trace a design and bring your veins through and that kind of stuff, man. All right, so first thing we'll do is get the threshold. So all I care about here is being tight on this, this far seam. All right, so... I'm gonna cut two and a half inches off of that. And then here, I'm just gonna do a 90, cause my, my cap here will come proud of that. Mm -hmm. Cool. You know? Yeah. Jigsaw. Boy, that cuts the best. Like a hot knife. Here. Yeah, I'm using this, man. Okay. We'll go scribe that. Yeah, this is almost good as it is. Tiny belly in the middle. Not much. This little trick here is worth its weight in gold. Let's go cut that. You got it? I do. That's the slope for water, man. We'll do that and then we'll trace our, we'll tape that in place and then trace our design. And get your we'll get all three of them up there, you know? Okay, pull that out. Wanna get this? Uh, yeah, go ahead. I'm gonna it right here. Yeah. On there? Uh-huh. Mark? Yeah, let me look at the back. So there's the center there. That's cool, yeah, it marked it really good. And there's the center. <laughs> Okay, and then from there, I'm gonna mark my measurements right now. So by keeping the panel facing the same direction, you don't transpose anything here. So we're gonna go, we'll go two inches all the way around this. This will go through fast. Here we go. Ready? You like it? Yeah. <laughs> Little easier than, than wood. All right. That's your hard one. Okay, that fits good. Yeah, I'll go like 90. This is a lot higher on this end, you know, because of the slope. Yeah, for sure. Okay, that gets us in to do threshold. A lot of walking it's back down, and forth. Huh? We are finally doing showers, man. Here, hold that to that wall, just not too hard. Got it. I need one, man. And I'm gonna go an inch and a half. You got it? I got it. You know, all the work in doing these showers is what we're doing right now. Pouring these panels is very simple. Close, just a little belly again in the middle. Yeah, jeez, it's pretty straight. Yeah. That looks good, dude. Look good. I'll start at this one. Should I get those closer together? Yeah, Let me go ahead and go a little higher. mark where this yeah, is. Measure. So off the ceiling, I'm seven and five eighths. Yeah. 
What do you guys think? Should we square it off or cut it organic? I like this. I think I'm gonna cut it like this. Guys, what would you do? Would you cut it organic or would you do it straight? Remember, leading in the witness, this is a log cabin in the woods. There ain't no rules. Imperfect is perfect. One down. All right, we'll put it in one more time just to mock it up. We could try to set up a Guinness Book of World Record when we do this, a fastest shower install. <laughs> if we got prepped and just dolloped it, we could go What would be nicer than putting a full support would be just cutting out squares blocks. and putting in a, a couple of blocks, man. Right, it would, because you know they're gonna do like. Yeah, I, I could. Don't they have like just. And then we could tell them where, where the, because I think they could put those hinges anywhere mm -hmm. on that door. They'd figure that out when they're out here laying it out. That'd be a lot nicer. This guy's always thinking. Hey man, we're innovating. I mean, I, I like I like the chiseled man. I think that looks killer. Yeah, and if you're gonna do it there, I would definitely do it on your backsplash. Yeah, I yeah, I will. On here too, it'd be cool. I will, and I think coming off that ceiling equal was good. You know, we got to make a, a scrap that is five by five, five inches by five feet, and then we have to add two inches. So we'll make it 10 inches by five feet. Okay, and then our cap, eight and a quarter by, are you tight? I'm tight. 56. What's up, man? And we'll get a diamond blade. You like, you like the rock edge on top? Did you purposely match the mountains out there? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so four to, eight, four to eight inches from the top and bottom, but he said at template, you could call that out and it's custom. All right, so we'll go six inches. You know, you we'll go, six, we'll go, we'll go seven that. inches, seven inch block. We're gonna pull these out. We're gonna color this pan right now, our initial color. I went and I got concrete stain. It's a solid color stain but I don't like it solid. I like to dilute it four parts water to one part solid color concrete stain. I'm gonna spray that on with two spray bottles because I have a light color and a dark color. We're gonna make our pan look like a rock. It's just concrete right now. As that dries, we're gonna do the uh, foam walls. We'll do the ultimate top coat over our decorative color. We'll meet in the middle. We're gonna figure out something to do on these edges. Okay, I think I might trim these out with iron, with metal. Metal, rock, wood, stone, all that combined looks really cool. We got all kinds of stuff to do. This is shower number one of four. Here we go. <laughs> so we'll go four to one. So I'll go four parts water, one part paint. It, it, that's concrete stain that you can tint? Yeah. It's, it's siliconized acrylic. Yeah. Doing it thin like this, see if you, if you leave it full strength, it's like painting, it's gonna have a film on top. This is actually gonna go dive into the concrete, the water's gonna drive it in there. All right, let me see the, the spray paint. Sweet, nice. It'll mute out quite a bit, but it's starting to look like a rock down there, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you really saturate the ground to give your base something, and then you start dripping your top color on. 
and oil and water don't like to mix so let's keep doing some really fun reactions there and now you can start to see what that stamp did mm -hmm. it's gonna be a shower pan like nothing else anybody's used before they'll be like what is this man I think it'll feel cool to your feet here goes the black ready and you want to you want to spray this on as that water is still on the surface and as that water moves, it, it look at what it's doing to the. That's sick. And then we're also seeing some of that color of the concrete come through. It's giving you a third color. You get a little bit of white on top. White looks cool. That's a cool shower pan, man. We'll let it dry and see what happens. It's crazy. Yeah, you see how the brown's coming through as the water. I'm liking that part, actually. It gives you that third definition. Mm -hmm. I wonder if those fracture lines are the... Yeah, what happens with the fractures is things settle in them heavier than the rest of it, and they self-define. Mm -hmm. It's cool. And I love it. It doesn't look like the same stamp, you know? You no, we just rotated it. And yeah. you jumped on it. Yeah. <laughs> you did? Oh yeah, we were we were like doing aerobics in there, dude, on it. All right, let's load up those tools, bro. Get everything ready for pouring those. All right, I got some composite leftover decking here, and I'm gonna cut it down so I can create a filler piece to create backing where I screw in my hinges, I need it tough. And that's what this is gonna do. So the foam doesn't compress where I install these heavy shower doors. Hey, this is easy to plan for. We called our shower door company and they said anywhere between four and eight inches on the offset from the ground to that first hinge and from the ceiling down. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's add some backing. That's a pro tip. And that's how you're able to use foam for shower walls. I'm just getting rid of these notches, gonna square this thing out, and then I was thinking I'll run the rest of it through the planer to get your height perfect. Yeah. And then we just sandwich your blocks in. Now we got meat. We're gonna go this speed square is seven and you know five sixteenths that edge is going to be our center point so we know if we set it that down that's where those hinges are right there okay that's a good way to remember if i was doing so i'd come off here right off the tip and i know it's right there i'll do the same thing here if I was doing this every day, doing repeatable stuff like that, makes it fast to lay out, but also to find it. So if I'm making shower foam walls, that's how I'm gonna do it from now on. Okay, and then our center point here, that's five, two and a half there. Three and a half is center. Okay, and then you just set those there. We'll find the center here on them. So I'll use this as our template, Mitch. We'll just do that. Okay, and then if we trace that and cut that, we should be good. All right, let's set those in and see what it looks like. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. Little quick coat and fiberglass. So where did I put my metal pieces right here? So here was my thought. Instead of using the metal, I was thinking of uh, temporarily Tyvek taping this so it'll release and then taping it underneath this piece, put like a eighth inch spacer here like that you know put maybe even a quarter inch spacer tape this underneath and fill this up let's try to glue two of these together see what happens
Boy, that, that seemed to work. Yeah, try to pull that apart. See if it comes apart. Good to go? I think so, yeah. We're gonna Tyvek tape all the seams. I'm also gonna run Tyvek tape underneath where we're gonna install this reinforcement. That way it's sticky, it'll hold it in place while we fill it up, it won't float when we put the quick coat on it. We'll thicken the quick coat, we'll add the fiberglass, we'll trowel that out, and we'll be ready for the next step. It seems like a lot, but it's really not. We've started this project th just this morning, and we'll have all the walls prepped and ready to go. We'll have these things poured tomorrow. How much would this cost in natural stone? You're looking at five, 10, 15 grand for a shower this size. I'm not kidding. Go to your granite yard and say, hey, I want full slabs in my shower and get ready for your jaw to drop. And, and really this, this tape that I'm putting on here doesn't need to come off. Here we go. That's why you put blocks in, man. So guys, I'm gonna torch this edge. I'm just gonna see the kind of texture it'll give me. I know you're not gonna see it up there, but it might give it a cool look and maybe transfer over a little bit. Try this. Yeah, see what it does to that edge? It almost like makes that edge perfect, man. That's sick. I like that. That tightens that up, man. It actually makes it really hard. That might be a pro tip all the way around for doing just like a rock face edge. That is really fast too. Oh, it opens it up at those seams. That ain't good. Opens these up a little bit. Here's what I'm thinking. Pull it out, there you go. I like it. Yeah, that aluminum is so good to tape to. That is not gonna let go. Now we could basically lift it up. That'll kind of give it something to create a dam. So basically anything that you use as the reinforcement here, just make it composite waterproof, that would work. And then a straight edge and a 1 8 inch gap here, we're gonna test that for the edges. The Play-Doh might be a bad idea too, but we are, we're learning so they don't have to. That's, the, that's, a, big, that's a big value of this channel is, if you, if you copy what we do, we'll tell you what we learned and you know, a lot of things we learn and then we fix it for the video so that you see the right way to do it instead of confusing you with the wrong way. I just learned where to put hinges on from one of our videos. Yeah. And then epoxy will release from the splashing. Really nice. Oh, I didn't think about that, bro. Yeah, I, I should have taped the metal. Do we risk it or do we peel them off and put Tyvek in them? I don't want to redo it, but yeah, good point, Luke. If, if I had my way, I would have Tyvek this right here. Probably not the underside, Tyvek. but just the one side. Uh-huh. We're just gonna do black, heavy black dye in this. Add some thickener. Ooh. Product placement. Airmail. This will just thicken it enough where everything doesn't run right off the edges so easy. 
it'll stay in that seam. It'll intermingle with that fiberglass well. Wow, you can feel it thicken in the drill. That's awesome. I think we're good. Let's try it. Just put her out? Yeah, right. yeah. Ready? Mm -hmm. Ready, Luke? Ready, Mitch? I'm ready. Woo! Sweet. Let me see a paint sticky stick. Paint sticky stick. Nice. I mean, you think about how much a shower costs. No, a shower is extremely expensive. Yeah, no kidding, man. You think about that and, and how much this actually saves people. You know, we save people thousands on counters. This is even more. I mean, adding a little dye just gives us a head start on our coloring process. We don't really care about the color here on this coat at all. We care about strengthening this foam. Fiberglass reinforced waterproof foam. How many hours do you think you save on just the install alone? Oh gosh, I don't know, Six. man. Oh, no, wait, if you're doing tile, days of work of labor. Ready, Freddy? I'm ready. Good? Yeah. Go ahead and waste a little more. Good there? Yeah, let's get it right on our edge. Yeah, nice. Yeah, we almost set it down like, uh, oh yeah. Let me. Uh, it's like a surfboard. Here, let's just lay this one down with it and then we'll flatten it all out together. Yep, like that, exactly. That, that kept our roll clean. Okay, I'm gonna get that squeegee out and just squeegee it and see what happens. Victory. You know this is making this strong, bro. Okay, let's try to cut this. So what, I, what I'm doing is I'm using my index finger here below my, my other finger to be like my gauge of, of how far back and I'm cutting it back like a half inch, quarter inch shy of the top because I don't want any of this fiberglass being proud of my mountain. But this is a lot better than trying to cut it during the thing and get it all perfect on there. And again, I learned this from watching videos on how to do surfboards. Like these, these showers are inspired by surfboard building, man. Yeah, do the edges like you're doing, that's real good. I'm happy with that. Yeah, so am I. The thickener just adds a little more bite. I mean, we're getting hardly zero drips. You know, and you don't want to be coming and torching this out and melting your foam. That rock face edge looks sick. So I mean, really, we're gonna we're gonna use about six hundred bucks worth of epoxy in the shower to save six grand. I'll take that return on investment. Guys, when you, when you add thickener, you want to mix the epoxy prior to putting the thickener in and then add the thickener. If you got it going full speed while Mitch adds it, it'll suck it right down. And you can feel it thicken on your mixer, huh? Yep. More, huh? Right there. Good. So that's really a pro tip. Instead of putting it in like I did, have somebody mixing and it sucks it right into that vortex. It's the epoxy vo mixing vortex. All 
I'm going to focus on this front edge. I'm going to fill it in these, and then I'm really just going to push it in these, these front edges here. Start filling those up. I'm curious at how this works, man. Might be an epic fail on that edge. All right, let's get our uh, roll. Drywaller skills have improved. Stay away, stay uh, away from that edge by about a quarter at least. Okay, let me uh, cut that. It's like if it drags in that epoxy, it's not gonna go anywhere. No, and it's, it's very easy to get rid of the, uh, the, the humps. Mm -hmm. Take it out. Ready? Yep. Okay, I'm gonna uh, clean my hands. Yep, perfect, yep. Yep. Like that? Uh-huh. These were easy steps. Very realistic to do a shower in a weekend. Mm -hmm. Guys, people ask all the time, what do I use to clean my tools? We use isopropyl alcohol and a rag. And in between grabbing your drill and, and working and stuff, have a have some paper towels handy. That way you can really clean those gloves, leave your gloves on, clean them, and then you have pretty clean hands. You're just gonna leave micro residue and not big blobs all over your tools. And then your knife, I'd leave it open so in case it does have too much on it, it doesn't shut permanently. You could still leave it open and use it in the shop. Ready? Are we peeling up? Yeah, we're gonna see if this comes off. I'm gonna, I'm gonna undo the uh, edges. Boy, that Tyvek doesn't want to come off that metal. Yeah, and that epoxy's peeling right off that aluminum. So I think we're going to be okay. Mitch, can I lift this up and peel the Tyvek from underneath? All right, I'm going to peel here. All right, let's take it back down. I'm going to try to roll this off. Oh boy, that's not. We might be in trouble. I think we need to flip this upside down on its face and then we'll kind of pry it from the underside. It bit to the aluminum really well. Yeah, don't do this. That was a fail. All right, so this was an epic fail. I'm already kind of thinking of ways to fix it. And I think what we're gonna have to do is glue some foam to foam. We'll score the edge and make it straight with my saw track to give us a fresh edge. We'll cut a strip, add it on and Go from there. We should have Tyvek taped it. Yep. It would have come off with Tyvek. Got it. Okay. Well, this is the DIY. This is the ugly truth about DIY. You learn as you go. Yep. 
and you know all said and done this is going to cost us a little time we didn't destroy the whole panel nice to be able to go really fast look at that look at that edge now I mean it's, it's perfect that's that's better than the factory edge because it hasn't been dinged up you know Mitch I'm thinking uh, you know that's outside your shower door yeah I mean nobody likes MDF in a shower but you know what uh, yeah, you're not gonna get that real wet. And I mean, I could use hardwood, but I could use plywood, but that MDF is straight. I could put a little eighth inch router on it and glue that right to this. And that thing would, would be perfectly straight. Yeah, so that might be the way to do these is to add an edge up front. All right, I think that's what we're gonna do. You can feel how much that fiberglass and epoxy is strengthening it just with that little bit we did. Oh, yeah, no kidding, right? That's yeah. a good point. I mean, having this at fabrication on site would have been smart. Bring our four footer and our eight footer. Yeah. And, uh,. You don't you don't melt the foam at all because I'm going fast, dude. Yeah, so fast. Cool. We still haven't cut into our blocks. That's nice. Yeah. See, that's the right height. We'll glue it. So we'll put that. I like that, dude. I like that. Tell me when. When? Rock edge. With you happy? Okay, I'm gonna work this edge. Okay, let's put that back up, make sure. Yeah, man. Yeah, I like it. That'll give it a good leading edge. This is gonna come out really good, man. What do you think about just doing that as procedure? I think it's a good procedure. You know, ideally this is a waterproof material, right? But I've made shower walls out of MDF for years. If you waterproof them, there's not a better waterproofer than epoxy. <laughs> right. Backside, backside is gonna be a, a waterproof membrane. Waterproof membrane. Okay. Um, like under the sinks. Exactly. Right. How many sinks have we had fail? It doesn't. Zero. How many dishwasher steam transfers fail? None. Nil. I mean, right. guys, let me know in the comments below, how much do you disagree with using MDF as a leading edge here? I know how well epoxy sticks to it. I know what I'm gonna get with this edge. Right. Come to my shop and let's have an epoxy battle. You, you do you, I do me. We, we go head to head. And then we'll, we'll meet back in 10 years and see if it still lasts. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put my money where my mouth is. <laughs> it's in my own house. Right. And it's plus, going in my own house. Plus you're three inches from the outside of the shower. Can you do MDF in a multi-million dollar house? Cut with a razor knife? Find out. Okay, here we go. Good. 
Are you happy? Yeah. Okay, go. Yeah, that's feeling good now. Pick it up by just the edge. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah. You had a Boy, it really made it rigid. Rigid. Oh, that's like rebar, bro. That could be an unlock, man. This is a very joyous accident. Yeah, yeah, it's good, man. I'm putting the uh, glue right in the center. This is how I edge band cabinets, dude. Would you describe? Yeah. No, no pins needed? No pin nails. Wow. Absolutely. Never had a failure either. Never had a callback because a piece of scribe fell off by, by doing this method. Okay, you get it set at the back. Happy? Yes. So you kind of tack weld it to get it aligned and then you iron it. And all you got to do is push down and then you iron that on. Golly, that's sick, man. Yeah, we fixed it. Proofed it. We fixed it for shizzle, my nizzle. This might be the best accident I ever had. The super glue makes it where you would want to do it on every job. That's the back edge where I'm gonna silicone them together anyways. But right here where these voids were, where they pre-cut, I'm just over sanding. That's the nice thing about doing a, an uneven edge as well. In the next step, Mike is gonna teach us how to make a one-piece shower caddy as well as a threshold using our mold making material. However, we're gonna make a full blown tutorial on this step. Mike goes over tons of tips and tricks on how to make the perfect mold. Let us know in the comments below how interested you are in learning how to mold just about anything. All right, I'm gonna make an alcove, an inset, a shampoo shelf. I don't know, a decorative something that can go in any wall just by simply cutting your sheetrock and installing it with some caulking. This is gonna be an easy install, but I wanna make a bunch of these. I'm gonna make a mold. So let's mock up a piece. I don't care what I make it out of. I'm gonna use MDF, because I'm gonna pour it out of concrete or epoxy and sand or any medium that can go into a mold. A shampoo shelf comes in really handy, especially when it's waterproof. And last time I checked, concrete and epoxy are both super waterproof. Let's get started. We know that the two by fours, a two by four wall, is actually three and a half plus a half inch of sheetrock at minimum, okay? So I got four inches. Then I got the thickness of my tile, but I wanna make this work for a drywall regular wall as well as a shower or even an exterior wall. You could even put a light in the top so that you get light shining down on your favorite statue or figurine or something of that nature. So if I got four inches at best, let's go ahead and do it three and seven eighths just to be safe. We'll go three and seven eighths deep and then we'll put a lip on it or something that we can do a rough cut out of our wall and it self trims. It also gives you something to adhere the caulking to to squeeze out and sandwich between the wall and your shelf so that you have a waterproof installation. Let's go three and seven eighths on our first cut. So that's how deep it's gonna be. Is that deep enough for a bottle of shampoo? I don't know, if you need it deeper, you could always add a, a window sill into that shelf to give you more protrusion out into the room. Okay, how tall do I want this? Let's look at what we're gonna trim it out with and decide how tall we're gonna be. So, there's my tiles. So I'm limited on width, okay? Because I gotta stay between studs. I know that studs are 16 on center. They're an inch and a half thick. So you subtract, you got three quarters and three quarters. You're gonna subtract an inch and a half. That's 14 and a half. If we go 14 inches total width, we should just squeeze between two studs. So let's go 14 inches. That gives us a little bit of play at the maximum width. So what I'm gonna do is just cut a back. 
I want to cut it back so that that's what I mock up to and I don't go any further than that. So if I'm 14 and I'm working with three quarter material and I want to pocket screw the back to the side so it's clean, I'll go ahead and subtract an inch and a half from that because I'm three quarter, three quarter. That makes me 14, 13, 12 and a half would end at 14. 12 and a half back. So that's what we're limited to on width. 12 and a half and then we're gonna have sides. Let's cut 20 inch sides just to start there. Okay, so let's just make sure this is under 14 inches. That looks good. That looks good. So what are we here? Oh, look, we're 14 and exactly we're 14. <laughs> so I need my top to be 14 inches. So this will keep it square while I glue it up. Okay, let go. This is just temporary, man. The glue would probably be enough, but I guarantee it doesn't come apart by tacking it like this now. So I'm just gonna miter these and then I'll split the difference. Eight of those. Time to get cutting. So what I do, is you make sure that this is square, which it is, and then this is your guide. The cheapest tile saw Home Depot has and get professional results. Stay tuned. Nice. That's how you do it. So the miter, the miter's the harder cut. So you do the miters first, and then you cut your seams where they're gonna meet in the middle. So you got a geometric, purposeful joint placement. Let's, uh, so that's that way. We need to go opposite side. So this has gotta come over here, and we just gotta do this thing opposite. Well, I would have been smarter getting a good blade. The blade that comes with this Ryobi saw is exactly what you would expect in a cheap tile saw. It's doing the job, but it's like cutting through, you know, stone as opposed to butter with a good blade. So that's the only thing I recommend if you're gonna do this and you're just gonna use your saw very limited, get a good blade though, and, and you'll be able to cut through this stuff easy. Or if you don't wanna do any of this work, check out the link below. If you want me to make you one of these and you love how it comes out, I might just do that. All right. Now we gotta cut, cut them to size. Let's go find the center points on these and then that'll tell us where we need to be. Center point of 14, last time I checked is seven. And then 21 and a half would be 10 and three quarters, is that right? 10 and three quarters. So what I'll do is mock this up. And that needs to be cut, oh man, right there. Look how close we are. I 
like that. That's nice, man. Look at that. That is nice. Okay, hold it. Don't move That's it. Good. You're the human vice clamp. I'm gonna glue yours in now. That's gonna be a really cool alcove, man. So there's that line from here to the short point. It's going to be like nine and a quarter. I'm happy with that. Yeah, this is turning out to take a little longer, but I would not be putting these in my house. How are you gonna do a tile inset shelf with foam walls? This is how. Boy, that looks good. Oh yeah, uh-huh, money. All right, I'm gonna just grout this with Omni, Omni Grip. I'm just gonna use this to fill in these joints. Kind of make my joints look perfect. They were pretty dang close. This is just a pre-mixed mastic. Dries really fast. I think I'm just gonna grout the whole thing and then wipe it clean. All right, where's that water at? Yes, yeah, I'm real pleased with it, man. Ain't gonna come apart. Can I get some of those screws? See, now I could just get that centered in that box. That's, that's perfect, man. Yeah, I'm a good half inch above the deck there, and that'll just sit in that box overnight. It'll take two pours. All right, why don't you go eat? I'll put a bottom on this and uh, and then I'll show them what I did. Copy. Luke's gonna go eat. You don't get to see this part. I'm just putting a bottom on this. <laughs> okay. There's your bottom. How was your, you're still eating lunch? Luke's eating lunch and filming at the same time. That deserves a like. And then, there it goes. That's done. That's ready for silicone. Let's make our next mold. Today's mold making day at the shop. So I bought these rocks for doing backsplash and they didn't have enough of them. And I'm like, you know what? What about, what about making stacked stone? Brah! That's heavy. All right. You know how fast that is to install and it looks like, you know, individual stones. But how cool would that be to make a backsplash mold where you just, because you know they fit together, right? But you just hold them apart so you could pour these individually. I mean, that does a, a large piece of backsplash in one pour. Make a bunch of these at once. What do you think? You want to try it with me? I do. You guys want to join me on today's mold making project? We're going to learn to make backsplash is one giant mold to save you, I don't know, thousands of dollars? Let's get started. <laughs> this is the best idea I've had all day. <laughs> We need, a, we need a threshold, do we not? We do. I see foam, pre-cut, put it right here, and mold that, dude. Tell me that ain't a good idea. Yes. 
Сейчас. Сейчас. And all I want to do is just remove the saw marks. That's really, I got 220 on there. That's really good. Plus I could use this as a window sill. I could use it as a, a floating shelf. You could use it as so many different pieces for construction, man. And the pain in the butt of concrete is in building a form. You know, think about this. Like I could put a piece of wood, cut this size, in that form and then fill the rest with epoxy or concrete and now you have a really unique piece of art you know i can make that threshold half burl wood so i'm just going to break this edge so that i don't have a 90. this is just 220. then i'm just going to do long strokes you don't want to run a router because the doggone router will dig into the edge Mitch is out there getting the, the shower walls prepped. We're getting this prepped. They're on site putting stair rails up. Project's getting done, man. Okay, this is part A, plat 40. Where's part B, plat 40. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yes. Get a mixer while well, then I'll pour half in there. Okay, here it comes. Here we go. You're coming up to the top of the tile, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's a cool, that's, that's pretty fun right there. We made the ultimate mold. We have tiles, we have thresholds, we got trim pieces. This wasn't hard to make. Took a little bit of time, a little bit of ingenuity. We had fun making our, our, our alcove, our inset, our shelf, our shampoo holder. We're gonna put that uh, second coat in there tomorrow. Let's see how this thing comes out of the mold. We gotta wait 16 hours. You gotta wait less than 16 seconds. Here we go. All right, it is the next day. The silicone is dry and I had a thought last night. You see these edges? I need to extend the edges of the perimeter of my shampoo shelf. Why? Because I wanna be able to pour a back into this. See, the silicone's gonna come right up to this edge, but if I extend these, I could put the silicone up higher on the outside perimeter, which allows me to pour and hit that edge and still have a nice release. If I don't do that, I'll have to stop right here and I won't have a back, I'll have to do two pieces. This way it allows me to do a one piece. Let's go. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just peel these out. I just pin nailed all this down so I could peel that out of that MDF. Not bad. And then I'm just gonna cut some strips, glue those in, it'll be simple as that. We'll put some Vaseline right here so that the silicone doesn't adhere to silicone. You see, that's the only thing that this silicone will stick to is other silicone. So we're gonna break that bond with some Vaseline.
juggling many projects at once. Uh, we're doing showers, we're doing molds, we're doing uh, shelving thresholds. Yes, dude. Look at this. It's awesome. Look at that. Oh, we're good, I think. Oh yeah, Nathan, that's good timing, dude. He's got it unlocked. Nathan was the man for this. Nathan, you're gonna, you get to pour this, cause you did that. Guys, you saw those little jars that Nathan was out there working. Thank you, bro. Nathan started in our customer service. He now answers a lot of your questions and comments on YouTube, so down below, Nathan, ask him a question, he'll answer. He gets to pour because he did this out of lots of little jars. So go for it, bro. Get it up to that line. Here he goes. Going in, full send. And then slow it down as you get to the top. The molecular components of snot actually makes a good mold. This is ready for concrete. Dang, this is... It's gonna be good, man. That's a good reference line. Do you wanna know what our secret is for a mixture? Our secret mix. You know, the kind of mix that you pay way too much money for? Rapid set cement. That's our secret mix. That deserves a subscribe because I just saved you tons of money mm -hmm. having a secret mix sent to your house. Shipping all the way from Arizona or wherever you, you're buying your, your bag mixes from. Mm -hmm. Come on, man, don't overthink it. It's polymer, polymer's that secret ingredient. Ugh. Ready? A lot of water, you want this soupy, man. Look at this thing, dude. That's done. Okay, we're gonna do the edges first. That's sick. What spray is that, Mike? That is the stone textured spray in stone black granite. 
Now for the white marble spray. Ready for this? Oh yeah. That looks cool. From the smile on it your face it looks like you enjoyed that uh, application process <laughs> i did <laughs> i did man now what about doing a little bit of the, see that yeah that that tones it down a little bit that makes it look yeah. more real speckle on there yeah dude that's your backsplash baby yeah that look at how much more yeah. real that looks Way dude better. nice all right we got one shot one opportunity to seize the moment. You own it. You got one chance. We got play sand right here. I see play sand, I see epoxy, I see a mold. I see innovation with some black dye and epoxy and sand. I'm excited. I can hardly contain myself. There's a substantial amount of white dye. We'll see what the sand does to it. This is kind of a cool experiment, you know? Black dye. Time for the sand. All right, mix that. Cool. Think it could use more? Uh -huh. Keep spinning. Tell me when. Good. Ooh, that's gonna be cool looking though. Ready? Mm-hmm. All right, grab that white one. All right, I'm gonna pour this randomly. Ready, Luke? Try to get it right down this. Seems like it's going. Yeah. That might be enough. Look at that, like swirling it together. They're definitely two colors. Yeah. That's kind of cool, man. Mm -hmm. We'll give that thing till tomorrow. It didn't leak. No. It's got lots of bubbles on the top. But I think we know what to expect as a texture. Ah, you got it? Oh, that's heavy. Okay. So this should come off a lot easier. Tiny bit of leaks. At the seam? Uh-huh. Yeah, a little bit at the seam. That's normal in mold making, that's for sure. Came off really easy though. This should come off easy. Look at that. Okay. Two tone, that's cool. That is really Dude, cool. Look at how cool it's gonna be. Peel this out. Okay. <laughs> nice, dude. Popsicle sticks. That did it. That's pretty sweet. That looks pretty cool, dude. It's solid, too. Dang, man.
I'm thinking we should just spray paint these. And then top coat it? Yeah. Yeah. Because that's sick. I mean, now you cut the hole, and this is installed, man. That's, that paint's so good. Okay, step one, gloss black. Step two, double A graystone, graystone. That's pretty cool. I mean, you could leave it like that. All right, where's the white marble spray? Would you add the white marble spray, Mitch? Yeah, to match your shower, I would. Okay, here we go. I don't know. This is gonna like. Oh yeah. Whoa! Great technique. <laughs> Black marble spray. <laughs> that looks cool. Oh yeah. Ready? Oh! <laughs> What do you think, Mitch? That looks tight. Looks wonderful. Guys, see this? This is a shower caddy. We were set out to make a one-piece shower inset shelf, and this is what we created. I'm gonna teach you how to do this to save thousands on all your future remodel projects. This can be an alcove. This can be in a hallway. This can hold your favorite statuette. This can hold your shampoo, and it's tall enough for the Costco Herbal Essence. Oh! Let's go. All right, guys, we're mixing part A, part B. We're gonna do a one-to-one -one ratio. We're gonna add our colorants. We're gonna do different buckets with different colors, combine those colors, pour it out randomly, and you get a work of functional art. Choose your colors, pick your poison, have some fun. Here we go, we're number one. Stone coat countertops, showers, floors, anything and more. What is it that you're gonna coat today? Let me know in the comments below. If you're like me, on your honeydew list, there's a big, giant, huge box that says, redo the showers, honey. And those showers can be daunting, but what we're trying to do is teach you that those steps are actually a lot simpler than you would think. The, this is designed for a do-it-yourselfer. That's exactly what my brother and I are. That's what I grew up doing. My dad never, ever said no to a project. In fact, we couldn't afford to hire somebody to do it, so we did it ourselves. So the reason you're watching this video is because you looked up something to do with showers. Maybe you're into epoxy, maybe it's woodworking art, maybe uh, you just happen to stumble upon this because we did an ad. And if so, welcome to Stone Coat Countertops because in this video we're going to show you how to go from honeydew to honey done. Check it off. What are we gonna put in here? White dye. That was bartender-esque. Okay, here we go. Exotic pour, here we go. It's mostly white. I like doing the buckets fast where you just kind of just take the guesswork out of it. You know, don't put in like any weight into that being a hard thing, you know? Okay. Almost want to do the big one, huh? Let's just get the big one done. Cool with that? All right.
Nice. Make some more. That's a sick color, man. Just scoop them in quick and go pour it out and I'll, uh, I'll get to mixing round two. Ready? <laughs> so sick. I'm gonna like that jet black vein right there, man. Dang, son. <laughs> Neat shower panel, man. Okay, we'll let it keep flowing and see what it does. Sick, right? Hello. Ho oh. ho. So I came here. A darker batch. Well, I just poured straight black to separate the two, and then I did a darker batch, but I like the light dark a lot. That looks good. Yeah, I'm happy with it. That's gonna be a showpiece, man. And that's what we'll do on these is do a light batch light and dark and almost keep your two buckets separate batch and then hit it. We'll look at where the dark hits, dark and then go light, light and dark. Guys, we're gonna go live. We're gonna show this. We're gonna do this panel, then this one here, we're gonna go live. So if you haven't seen our lives, they're unedited, they're unscripted. It's exactly real time. So if you like this video, if you're getting value, hit that like. We're gonna link the live so you can see how long these actually take. They're not that long. I'm, I'm, we're showing you the steps. Go check the live out if you're interested in doing a shower. You'll probably pick some of the idiosyncrasies up that are important for you to know in your pour. But, like the human race, we're all different. Some like a long video, some like a short video. In this one, we're trying to give you a mixture that's all around, ding, pro tippage. I mean, if that's not fast, I don't know what is. There's no skills needed here. No. Okay, I'm gonna make this dark back here. Hey! 
Hey you. Wow. <laughs> That's so cool, dude. Really good. It's a good palette. Mm -hmm. Look at what the orange does. Just a little orange in there is, is really cool. Mm -hmm. That's what I. This and is you're keeping it real translucent in the cups, huh? Yeah. The orange. Yeah. A lot of this is translucent. And I'm just gonna break surface tension here. And bring that through, make it make sense. You know, I hated this a minute ago. It's already starting to grow on me. Right. You know, that's why you walk away from it for a minute. Yeah. See, this black will make sense hitting that other wall. Yep. And then that one is white and we could hit the wall with white and then it doesn't matter what it is from there. I'm real happy with it. Yeah, it's wonderful. The blues in there is just beautiful. This this wall is turning out crazy, crazy, hey, crazy. Live. What is up? I'm Mike Quist. This is Epoxy Live. Do you want to learn how to build shower walls on a budget? from epoxy that look like stone. This is it, this is a masterclass. I, I, I'm looking at this piece we just poured and I'm like, we gotta go live and show the real time on this and exactly how easy it is. So let's get started, ask those questions. Mitch is gonna fire away. I'm gonna mix. Here's the color, color palette I'm working with. I got white metallic, I got diamond dust, I got black metallic, I got white and black dyes, and I got cobalt blue spray paint, rustic orange, white and black, and a little bit of bronze. You ready? Ready. Nice. Look at that. Yes. All right. Look at what it's doing. That's why you mix those colors in the bucket like that. Look at, look at what it automatically does for me. That requires no artistic skill. Zero artistic skill. And that's what you're gonna get. I'll frame this. See, it's got white coming out now. I'm gonna just frame this part with white. I really like to mix the two and contrast it a lot. I'm gonna come around there where you are, Luke. Just give it a border. See this little cut out there, that's, uh, that's for our faucet. I mean, our, our controls. I'm just tilting this panel to see how far I can get this to spread out. So I'm putting everything except for the black in there. Okay, and I'll show you why. I'll show you what I'm gonna do here. See all these cups that still have something in it? This is where you come back and you combine all these cups to give you what I call a touch-up cup, where you could come in and I have a miniature uh, exotic pour in a cup that you could come in and fill in any of the low spots. Put just a little bit of black in there. Look at that cup already. Look at, how does that not turn out good? There's that piece right there. You said the front needed yeah, no, needed to be. Well to other wall there. Man, that's neat. Okay, I'm gonna pour right here. Nice, nice, wow. I, I think I'm gonna pour a vein. 
Guys, let me know. Would you pour a vein down this dark spot? Ooh, like by the handle? Nah, yeah, I mean, I guess. I think I'm gonna kind of cheat this way. Nice. I want to take this and not be a giant blob there. Here we go. And this is going to push everything else out. Now see where it's bulbous right here? I'm going to come here and just finish it over that edge so it's not bulbous. Okay, now we got the little piece out there. Let's go do the little piece. Okay, I'm just gonna use my hands, sorry. I'm gonna move that around. And what'll happen is, as you put this lighter uh, color over a, a wash coat like this, it'll push the wash coat. I'm gonna do veins with that lighter color. And it'll push the wash coat between the veins and give you these really distinctive veins. It's, it's such a good way to, if, especially if you're a rookie, and you've never done this before, it, it gives you guarantee that you cover the whole piece because it breaks all the surface tension and it, it makes your veins look very natural. All right, here, you ready? Ready. We got the wash coat and here comes the veins. There you go. If that's not the prettiest threshold ever, I don't know what is. Look at that. That is sick. See these little dippy drops? Just touch those, touch that, touch these right here. Look at that white vein. That is sick. Ooh, your vertical looks wonderful. Look at that. Look at that. We poured this we poured this panel about two hours ago, so that will stay put probably a lot. That's money right there. Giving you that realism. Look at this. Look at the sediment style. Yes, yes, oh yeah. How do you like me now? Ow. Oh yeah, brother. It gets all these reactions because we've done different additives. We do metallic powders, we do dyes, and we do spray paint. And those additives mixed together create these natural effects. This looks like a very high-end stone there and that's because of all those additives. And you look at where we poured that black, see the edges, how they're starting to intermix? Um, that's, a, that's a natural thing that occurs in Mother Nature too. So you get this gradient that goes from light to dark and I think that, that gives us a really fantastic look. This is a shampoo shelf insert and I'm gonna show you how we created this so that you can make, I'm gonna cut out the foam this will go between studs. It'll be a shampoo shelf one piece. It'll look like it's all tile and stone trim. It'll match my shower. It's a waterproof solution for a shelf in any wall. I'm gonna show you how to build that yourself.
that's that's the best timing right there. Sanding this right now allows me to make any mistakes that I need to make in the pour, whether it be nibs or nubs, high points, low points, bubbles, anything that I'm not happy with, I get to mitigate it right now and then apply the top coat. I love this because it's not stressful during the pour. I could come in late and do veins, even though they're going to stick up a little bit, I get to sand it flush now. We're wiping with 91% uh, isopropyl alcohol. Just getting all that dust off, prepping for that top coat. Mitch is out there getting the rollers ready. And by golly, I think we're ready. This is a real threshold here. So we'll use this as our wet, and we'll use this one as our dry. I'm gonna start mixing, okay? All right, guys, we're gonna do the ultimate top coat. I'm gonna kill the air in here so it's not blowing dust around. I'm gonna shake part A. We'll add part B and part A. That's a two to one ratio, two parts A to one part B. We're gonna add about 10% water so it thins out the material, allows us to back roll multiple times to get the excess off so you have no orange peel, it looks like a sprayed on finish, and it has zero lap lines. This application makes it look like you sprayed this on, almost as if you've been doing automotive clear coats for years. This is a DIY friendly process that we've developed so you can go from concept to complete to total durability in your showers, your countertops, your floors, your desks, your hearths, your mantles, your art, I don't care what, you, what it is, it adds massive durability and natural sheen, and it gets us complete with these giant shower panels. So what we're gonna do is tag team this. Because they're so big, Mitch is gonna do half, I'm gonna do half, because the key is timing. You don't wanna back roll, back roll, back roll over and over again. You wanna do it as fast as you can per panel, and then move on and leave it alone. You're gonna be tempted to touch it. You'll see lap lines when it's fresh. Let it dry. Follow this video. Follow our top coat video if you need super in-depth clear instructions. But honestly, don't make it overcomplicated. It's not that hard. Throw me the water. Okay, here's how much water I put in. Oh, normally I mix part A and part B before I add the water. So I did that a little different. You wanna keep your variables the same. That probably won't hurt it, but Look how thoroughly mixed. Exactly. So the durability is found in the thickness of this coating. The reason you shake part A is because it's got a matting agent and you don't want that to just solidify at the bottom. Get all that out, make sure it's coming out. That matting agent is what gives you that natural look. Um, it also hides scratches or imperfections. It makes you look like you did an absolute perfect process. Allows you to get away with Murder. Okay, not murder, but it's pretty good stuff. See murder. 
In this video, you'll learn epoxy murder. It's not even against the law. You ready, bro? I'm ready. We're gonna move fast. All right, let's go fast. It's a little thinner than normal. So I put a little more than 10% water, but this will be a good test. So much easier with two people. And we started on the big piece. And that's because this is the early part of the working time. Right, Mitch? Yes, exactly. And if you don't have a helper, just don't mix up your entire batch. Exactly. Two batches. Now I'm gonna start to dry roll with the wet roller. What's nice about shower panels is they're vertical. And on vertical, you actually hide even more imperfections. The light's not hitting the entire piece at the same time, like a ceiling or a countertop. Whenever you're doing drywall, the walls are much easier than the ceilings because the ceilings show everything. Okay, I'm gonna grab my dry roller and then I'm, I'm gonna go with the grain here. You want me to apply more wet on the next one? No, dry roll your half and we'll meet in the middle. Like, I doesn't feel like this is setting up at all yet, you know? Right. Yeah, this, I think that water's an unlock, man. And I love, I love how far that top coat does. I'm getting excited to do the floors, man. Okay, I got this top edge. Make sure you get your front edge good. Okay, I'm gonna put a new dry roller on and hit it one more time. I'm gonna follow the leader. Okay. Yeah, that. That makes it tight, dude. That is the key right there, is when your dry roller gets too saturated, look at what happens. You just switch it to a brand new one, and this is how you get that tight, tight finish. So in, in conjunction with the water and a final tight dry roll, and you can see we're going with the grain of the piece too. Nice, next. This is like 100 and something square feet really fast. We got, we got 32 and 32 on the two side panels, okay? Square feet? Yep, that's 64. And then on the back, you got five by seven. What's that? So 99 square feet. How to top coat 99 square feet in five minutes. And all you're doing right here on this first initial is making sure there is no dry spots. You're getting it on heavier than you'd like. I'm gonna use my wet roller to do my initial layout of the material. And, and by doing this with the wet roller, it does eliminate a lot of saturation that you don't want on your dry roller. Gets any big sloppy drip marks off, runs, pools. Here we go, dry roll. What's your top coating with you today? Yes, top coating with you has it's been a fine experience. Okay, <laughs> little one. So guys, see how we left our very small pieces for the end? And that's also a pro tip. When top coating, start with your big pieces first and remember, put the pressure on the back side of your roller and work away from the tip. There we go. Done, son. All right, here we go. This will be fast. Okay. 
Yeah, that looks kind of cool. Okay, black spray paint. Now double A stone, gray stone. Ready? Nice. That looks more like a legit shower pan too. Should I? I think that looks cool, man. You gave us some pump. Right? Let that dry, we'll top coat it tomorrow. Yeah. Trial and error. I got my recipe now. That looks that looks pretty cool. Like breaks up that white. That's what we need to do on my on my rocks, man. There we go. It's better with full. Yeah. It's layered. It's yeah. Sick. Much better with full. <laughs> that's a that's a countertop. Yeah. Yeah, you could do that on a stinking panel, dude. That looks like a shower pan. That can be the whole you can do the whole that's shower a, like that. You could do a countertop like that. Stone yeah. spray, two layers of marble spray. That's a wrap. Yep. I am now happy. That that looks legit. Alright, we're all cleaned up. We're gonna use the ultimate top coat over our synthetic stone shower pan created from a stamp out by the river. Guys, if you don't pay attention, you might live in a van down by the river. You have plenty of time to live in a van down by the river when you're living, living in a van, van down by the river. The river. <laughs> I'll take some water. All right, so we're gonna do, we're at 24 ounces. Okay, here we go. These are quarter inch nap rollers. Yes, sir. I've already de-lent them with some tape. I'm gonna put it on nice and heavy. Don't be alarmed at the milky-like appearance. Mm -hmm. Don't panic. And by doing this prior to your shower walls, it allows you to get in those corners without hurting the walls, anything like that. I'm really glad we're doing it right now. Shoot, tomorrow we'll be installing these walls, right? Yeah, we're, we're, I got Guinness Book of World Records coming. We're gonna do the fastest shower wall install of all time. I feel like that's a, a pretty thick coating. Yeah, you're well covered, I think. And you don't have any big valleys you've gotten that out of there, good. So I'm just going in and kind of really rolling this with this saturated roller, getting every little nook and cranny, and then I'm using it as a sponge to suck out anything that's maybe a little too heavy. I feel like uh, you're not gonna see lap lines on this anyways. This is the first time I've ever done um, really rough concrete with this product, um, except for my tree. We did our tree uh, have you seen that where I made it uh, out of concrete with my hands? Same concrete, different process, and uh, came out really good. I think I'm ready for the dry roller. Dry roller ready. Here we go.
That's sick, right? Yeah. Brett, look at this one. So we're 42 off the ground, 29 to the center. And then we'll go off of that. Nice. So we're going 42, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to get a piece of tape torn, put it like roughly horizontal right here. If you tag the one side, I'll move my tape. Okay. And then we're 29 is center. Okay. So we're doing two verticals. So you're 21 and a half, 21 and a half right there. Mm -mm. Get one on your side there too. But if you get this level, your install should be really easy. I'll just finish the cut with that. All right, let's just try to pick it up. That's a pretty big caddy, dude. Down bubble? Yep. A little easier to haul it around with the hole in it. And I'm gonna take this wall out when I cut it because I'm gonna have to get in there with the sawzall mm -hmm. and everything else. I got one right on the edge here. We got one stud, but it's in a bad spot. Damn, that is a bad spot for one, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Shoot. You got it? Got it. You got a hammer and Mitch and like a flat bar, like a yeah, core bar? Yeah, here, I'll grab it. Nice, dude. Ready. I'm going to cut this insulation. I want to dry fit everything, get our, get everything pre-fit. This will make it insta-fancy. Snap. That's pretty dope. And it matches the pan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's fancy, dude. Nice and tight to the shower. Oh, too, it's bro. so easy. It's so, there's, this is a game changer, man. It's so really cool. We'll take this back with us to uh, top coat with the threshold. Okay, I'll go get the next piece. Thanks for giving me the easy one. You're welcome. That's insane. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> That's sick. Oh, we gotta cut that out. We gotta hog it out. This could be an epic fail right about now, dude. I might blow out the whole piece right now. 
I gotta cut it out. I'm gonna plunge through the backside. Anybody who's ever chipped out a beautiful piece of wood, you're done with the project, you go to do a core hole and blow out. I could blow this, I could destroy the whole piece right now. The whole point is, is don't go fast. Get that bit spinning really fast and then go slow as a plunge. You ready? I got it. Here we go. Clean. <laughs> All right, here we go. We poured this out of one piece. Epoxy? Epoxy and sand. Cool. That's that cool. used to take a lot of time with tile, dude. Yeah, that, that seems, look at, look at how good that looks. You the grays match. Yeah. All right, 57 and 7 eighths by five and a quarter. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Sweet. Already? Okay, I'll silicone that in right now. And the next one goes in between the panels, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Coming back. Well, you know, that's kind of nice versus granite right there. You, yeah, you can, holds nice and tight to your you, wall. You can compress it, dude. <laughs> the install is certainly easier. No granite dust, I There we go. There's your slope. <laughs> Oh, that looks so good when you start doing this. Look at that. Damn. And then we were eight and a quarter, right? Something like that. Yeah, see, that'll give me that a half inch overhang on each side. We're gonna do the Guinness Book of World Record install. 10.55 a.m. Here we go. Ready? Ready. Dot method, man. You got a new tube? Been waiting for this day. All right. Back wall going in. on here. There we go, nice. 
So I like to put a little horseshoe above this and then the water, any water that comes out of that spout or something like that, it's going to hit that and go around if it happened to get out of that panel, which it won't. These are really waterproof. Honestly, waterproof in your walls, good, but you probably don't even need to with these panels. And I'm just doing the dot method, just getting silicone to act like screws into this panel. Yeah, that looks good. <laughs> yeah. That's clean, man. Next wall. What time are we at? Eight minutes. Eight, Eight minutes. minutes. Good luck trying to get these panels out. I apologize in advance for the guy 50 years from now, probably one of my children, <laughs> remodeling this. Oh, there we go. Little guy. Okay, what time is it? How? 11 minutes. Okay. Yep. We just, we just did a 100 square foot shower install in 11 minutes. We just did a 100 square foot shower in 11 minutes. What's up, tile setters? No competition. <laughs> oh wait, we gotta show them what this is gonna look like. You gotta add 10 seconds for this. Oh man, step back. <laughs> All right, let me put in the drain. <laughs> Woo! Probably should tape these together, Mitch, because they're wanting to flex a hair, just because I cut them so BT. Oh yeah, some flex and pressure. Okay, so I'm gonna draw the actual threshold and then we'll do our setbacks and stuff there. 57 and 7 eighths. Go one and a 16th thick. And then we need to start that notch seven and an eighth. We're gonna start the notch at Seven and one eighth. Yep, I think that'll do it. I think I think it's cool that it ties the threshold in together and everything with the same paint job. All right, let's go. Ugh. Fifty-seven and seven eighths long. Okay. So this is 57 7 eighths, then I start my dog ear. Okay. Six and uh, 7 eighths. And it's an inch and an eight thick.
Not bad. I'm doing that so I don't scratch the uh, the panels getting this in. All right, we're doing our ultimate top coat. We're doing that on the threshold and we're doing it on our backsplash stones. Now, the reason that I'm at applying the ultimate top coat is I wanna lock in the color. When I scrub this over time, when I wipe that backsplash down, when I do the threshold cleaning, I don't wanna burn through the paint. After all, this is spray paint, right? So the top coat locks it in with extreme durability. It also gives you that natural sheen. This is the easiest stuff I've ever cleaned because of the thick, hard, candy-like shell that we put right over these stones. This has been a blast seeing it come together. I love seeing the shower panels go in today. It was exciting to see how realistic it looks, how the inset shampoo shelf looks, how easy that install was. Goodness, it took us 11 minutes to glue those panels in. I've done hundreds and hundreds of showers. In fact, I was in the tile setting business for years and I've never done a shower that fast, that easy, and confidently, I can tell you it is DIY friendly. I add about 10% water. I'm gonna mix with a paint stick. And because I'm doing thick stones here with lots of undulations, there's lots of highs and lows, there's a pretty heavy profile on these, on these stones, I'm gonna use a half inch nap roller as opposed to a quarter inch nap that I use when I'm doing countertops. It's okay to leave it a little bit heavier because this texture allows that. It doesn't need to lay out like glass because it's not, it's bumpy. Here we go. And there's no sanding prep on the stone, right? Yeah, no, I, I haven't sanded anything because if I did, you would only be burning through the high points. You'd be actually removing the paint and seeing little white spots of the color of that concrete. So you don't need to sand. Um, what we have done on the threshold is actually used our t-shirt to remove any little bumpies from that double A stone gray stone. That's what we remove the bumps from. Uh, I'll tell you what, stepping in that shower pan today while we were installing our, our walls, I think it's the perfect texture for a shower pan. It's completely non-slip, uh, easy to work in, um, it's, it's comfortable on your feet. Did you guys see this, the shower I've begun prepping? What these other walls are for, we actually used inch and a half round stones, okay? We, did, we got these from the gravel yard and we tried a new type of shower pan, so we'll see how that comes out. Guys, if you haven't subscribed, don't forget, subscribe, ring that bell so you get notified when we show you new revolutionary ways to take DIY and put it back in the driver's seat, man. This is really cool projects that took us years to come up with and years to master, and we hope it saves you lots of time. All right, here we go, Luke, you ready? Ready. Woo! That's heavy, so I apply it heavy, and then I remove it with the dry roll. Mitch, are you ready to help me dry roll? Uh-huh. Mitch is removing any extra lint by simply uh, going through masking tape. And I only do one coat on here, guys. That's all you need for really extreme durability. Ready for the dry? I think so, man. I'm gonna start on these stones. I'm really glad we got this half inch heavy duty roller, man. I think, I think that was the right call. Getting in all the nooks and crannies. Yeah, actually very easily. I almost forgot to do my shower caddy. So we're hitting this late in the working time. Let's see if we can pull it off. No doubt. Start the timer. See if we can pull it off. I think it'll take us longer to roll top coat on this than it did to install the whole shower. <laughs> <laughs> Now.
Nice. That's it. That looks sharp. You like it? I do, very much so. Here we go, let's try it. That looks good. That looks cool. Just to write it out off. Thanks, man. Ooh, that looks sharp. Let's glue it in. It'll look even sharper with glass doors on it. Can I hand this to you, Mitch? Yes, you can. I have it. Okay, here we go. Blob some daubs. You want to give it some high points. Okay, now I'm just going to run an edge right here just for water. And then I'll definitely do a beauty caulking job on top. I'm going to put this back on our paper towel. I'm going to get in the position and you could hand it there. Got it. Set it here. Set it here. Let it rest down into that bead. That's a really good measurement there. Yeah, that's great. And it's got a slope already going back into the shower, which is what you want. You want a, a quarter bubble slope. All right, let's do this. Let's glue this guy in. All right, so all I'm doing here is I'm just gonna do a perimeter. Go put this in. Man, that looks good. Well, that's good. I'm not getting a bunch of ooze out. That looks fantastic. Yeah, it does. Okay, give me that blue tape and I'll do my thing. It's right here. I got it. What an easy install this, this inset is. The shower is coming right along. It looks really good. <laughs> okay. All right guys, all I wanna do is just do a beauty bead around this. It stops any water from getting in. And the beautiful thing about having zero joints is there's zero opportunity for water to get in here and leak. I also have grind, I, I, when I did a little bit of grinding and sanding, I did a little belly right here for it to, to leak right out. So note to self, pick a top and a bottom. You could even grind that out when you sand your piece, but that was really fast and that'll be very effective with the shower. Not like a lot of water is gonna hit in there, but anything that does will flow right out. And, and by taping it, you don't have to be good at caulking. You can simply run a heavy bead and use your finger to tool it. Here you go, Mitch. Thank you, brother. This house is definitely coming along. You start doing stuff like this and mm -hmm. it, it goes from a construction site to a showroom pretty fast. Yeah. You're putting your plumbing on and shower doors and this room's almost done. You know, why aren't we using a color here? Because color sometimes, you know, in, in caulking will draw your eye to it. Like white will look like toothpaste. Black will look like really shiny sometimes. So the clearer you almost lose it. And so if you have nice tight joints that don't need to be colored, that's the way to go. And you don't want to over tool this, but I'm getting anything excess out so that when I peel the tape, I don't have a sharp line. Yeah, that looks nice. And I've overlapped my tape in a way that it all comes off as one piece here. And what's nice about that Ultimate Top Coat is it, it could be used today. I mean, I, I would need to let the silicone dry. I could use this shower tomorrow. That's, that's pretty fast, you back in service. Look at how good that looks. I think that's way better than corner shelves. Yes. What a green. <laughs> All right, let's caulk these out. You'll notice, guys, a pro tip. When I'm masking things off, I actually like to tear it off the roll. 
You get a lot more control of your tape when you do that and the roll doesn't get in your way. So if you want to get perfect joints, pull it off the roll. We'll go like that, pull it off the roll. And the nice thing about this is I don't have too many joints in this shower. I got two inside corners and I got my threshold. On the bottom, because we're so tight to the bottom, I'm gonna let the bottom be. And I don't think I'm gonna caulk or grout that because that all flows nice and tight to the drain. And I'm waterproofed way past that drain. You, you notice I'm leaving about a heavy eighth because I want that caulking to be able to get in that joint and I wanna be able to peel that out without pulling out my caulking. When did the doors come in? Haven't ordered them yet. You don't order doors on until it's installed because they gotta they gotta come template to your actual space. Makes sense. And so that's you can use a curtain rod for a bit until you're ready. But yeah, unfortunately, if anytime we've ever tried to order doors prior to having the shower in, there's modification needed and it's tempered glass, so you can't cut that tempered glass easily. So I even like to tape stuff like this off just so I can blob it in and not worry about what I get it on. Boy, that little partial roll of tape is done right by me. It's making it. And I'm just going down on the edge of this. Uh, down the face a little? Yeah, just the threshold, not the foam. Okay. There's probably enough on your finger to go down the face, okay? And then I'm just gonna do one joint at a time. That way I have all the time I want to tool it. And then I'll start on that next joint after I peel this tape. I'm gonna attempt a twofer here. Right on. Yeah, that's a good reason right there to have them secured to the wall. They don't move when you do that. Yeah, exactly. Looks clean. Good call. That is, clear. Yeah, the clear. Look at look at how that clear looks. Yeah, that's sharp. And that clear hasn't fully dried, but it, it disappears in there. Instead of doing black where it would jump out at me. I made a mistake in a white shower to do white caulking per you know request and it doesn't doesn't come out as good as clear. Right, it exaggerates the line. Then I'm not going all the way to the bottom, what I'm doing is using, um, using my finger to pull the excess and then I'll go to the bottom and put it in. If I go all the way to the bottom, I'm gonna get a corner that blows out and I don't want that. I'm gonna pull it, I got excess, and then I'll touch the bottom. Right there, see I got it on my finger and then I come here to the bottom. Now I don't make a mess. No mess, no stress, no coconut. No fuss, no muss, no coconut? So we asked Bubba, we said, hey Bubba, do you like Oregon or Hawaii better? And he said, he said, I like Hawaii better. We go, why? He goes, because it's more coconutty. Uh -uh. That was his response. Dude, you gotta love little kids, dude. Yes. This shower looks really good. How much would someone pay for that shower? I want to know from you guys, what is that shower worth? $600 in material, what's it worth? Let me know. Is it worth four, five, six K? Three K, two K, 10 K? Let me know today, how many K? I mean, people are worried about foam, don't be. It's, it's solid, dude. I mean, you're gonna fall into your foam. No, you're not gonna dent it. You got concrete on the ground. It's seamless. You have zero grout joints, super non-slip, but the top coat will allow the water to flow. Man, where's my, sh I wanna put my valves on. I wanna take a shower now. And you know, for us to find, you know, to find where the center is it would be right there right it'd be right there is the center of that right and then boom center right there and then the center of these would be right there boom 
Uh -huh. And then it's the center of the threshold. Correct. Yeah, that looks really good, dude. Very good. Wow.